Winning a much-needed Delano Polo Award in the Red 5 is Michael Sykes, second in the championship. And on his outside, there you see car number 10, Matthias Taub, who leads the TM Master Cup Series championship. The two major news items entering this weekend are, uh, well, rather earth-shattering. The first of which is that FPO is actually here. Uh, cars 55 and 99. Uh, several of their senior management were arrested after the round of Colorado in uh, what can I can only describe as one of the most bizarre incidents I've ever heard of. But um, FPO managed to secure some extra backing in time for this race, and it's good to see them here. The second major news item involves a drive of car number 7, as you see Carlos Roqueta is on the inside of row 10, replacing Yuli Anasova for the two Australian races. And uh, beyond the Australian tour, it appears that Dan McKay is, uh, will take over car number 7. Uh, Yuli Anasova was uh, rather unceremoniously sacked from that car. Uh, she had actually uh, already uh, planned to come to Australia before she was told uh, that, her that her services would not be needed for the rest of the season. Uh, in Katsum Engineering's press release, I didn't hear too many thank yous to Yulia Nasova for basically building that team up from nothing, and uh, I think it's uh, sort of a rather sorry state of affairs over there at Katsum Engineering. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Uh, the initial start was waved off because car number 9, Arto Kekkonen, was dropping fluid on the racetrack uh, in car number 9, so uh, big disappointment for Arto. He did manage to get the 9 car started, but... Uh, as you see, the field takes the green, but they're waving that one off quickly. Um, the, uh, they brought the yellow out already. Apparently, they didn't get everything cleaned up to satisfaction. And everyone's bailing for the pit lane because, remember, they did take the green. Oh, we got problems in the back. Oh, boy. That's Ash Bridges in the 30 car, the third Manicor Engineering car. Roger Kendall in his debut. Two debutante drivers. Now, uh, since the field took the green, everyone was going to make a mad dash for the pit lane before the pace car came out. Um, that one. Oh, we got more trouble in the pit lane because Ash Bridges has gotten into, into Chris Allen, it looks like. So, um, and here's Benoit Vukler, who was one of the cars that was hit. Vukler back with Tutino. There's Bridges getting. Oh, we got contact there. Vukler not happy with Ash Bridges. And, uh, well, this one's just started. And Vukler's got his car pointed the wrong way. And we've got Taub in trouble. Smoke building up back out of the back of the 10 car. The championship leader, Taub, he's out of the race. And we got another car in pit lane. That's Hannah Percy. Another one of the promoter's options, making her first Master Cup start. So Percy in trouble early. Taub out of it. He's going to be, uh, well, that's not what he needs. But, okay, this is going to be a little hard to explain. Yamino Tenshi, Scott Bates, Ben Atkins, and Chris Davenport all stayed out. Uh, they didn't pit when everyone else was pitting. Went around the racetrack and put the back quarter of the field a lap down. And this is lap five. So Yamino Tenshi has already uh, brought out... Um, has already thrown the dice a little bit. And that 25 car skirts into the lead. Tenshi qualified very well. The clockwork car. And, oh, we got trouble in the back. Oh, boy. We got Troy Adams around. One of the Australians in the field. He's the only uh, Australian that's a series right. Oh, looked like some contact between the 28 of Scott Soiler. He also didn't. Be oh, Luciano's in it. In car number three. Zach Duff in the 74. May have been contact. Oh, Packer Carroll. Car number two just came flying in there, didn't use the brakes at all, it seemed. Okay, we're watching the two car. I think he uses all the lifts off there, but then he just doesn't slow down at all, and just piles through, it piles into the into that like a madman. Um, I'm not quite sure what was going on in, um, what was going on over there, but, uh, telemetry showed no use of the brakes by car number two. We're looking at Scott Stoidler in car 28. Now, he drifts up the racetrack. And it looks like he might be headed straight for the wall. Zach Duff tried to get... Looked like Duff may have tried to force a three wide there just a little bit. And uh, just very slight contact set this one off. Luciano nowhere to go. He gets into that. Car number three, he's done. Hasn't been a good weekend for him. Peter Short almost hit. And then Packer Carroll just came flying up there. Um, I would have figured he would have taken, taken a bit more evasive action than that. Tavina Henson in the 11 car. Collected in a secondary incident there. Car number 11, one of the Lynx cars. Henton, sort of an outside championship contender. She has two wins this year, including Cariala, but it's going to be an early end for Henton. Anna Percy making her series debut was in uh, the pits for quite a while in the 08 car for HQS Racing, who's also making their uh, their first ever Master Cup start. So uh, rookie team, rookie drivers, not exactly had the best of weekends, even though they did impress in qualifying. Tenshi still leads. The Clockwork Midnight car has the least powerful engine in the field, but... Um, there's a lot of things going on with the with a lot of things going on with that car, 
It still has about the same power to weight ratio as the rest of the field does, and it's really not been the best or uh, of the most competitive of car up until now, really. Uh, Tenchi as one uh, her only career win came on a track very similar to this, however, uh, at uh, Houston. Daniel Melrose, who's definitely uh, one of the main crowd attractions here. Peter Short in that 22 car, and Joao Paulo Vida off to very strong starts. All three of these guys, I don't think we're expecting to run all that well here. Uh, Daniel Melrose is hoping to be running this well in the 67 car in front of the home crowd. His team will be at the other uh, race on the Australian Tour, next race at Queensland. So uh, Melrose will get, um, even if uh, today doesn't go, tonight doesn't go all that well for him, looks like he'll have another shot to show off in front of the home crowd. And uh, certainly I think all of his fans are getting their money's worth because this 67 car is running very strongly. Uh, we expect um, an announcement shortly that Vernstrom and MRT will be full-time in this series in 2014. Adrian Devereaux in car number one, uh, who was one of the big losers in that uh, early race uh, kerfuffle with the pit lane, is on his way back to the front. In car number one, Leonid Roderick in the four, Kevin Dwyer in the 72, also trying to work their way forwards as well. Devereaux in this one car um, uh, didn't really show, uh, we don't think he showed his hand in practice in this one car. And uh, there's some other news lately involving Hot as Walter Racing, and it involves the driver of this car. Car number 12, Melanie Cleveno, has been confirmed to be replacing Luciano Savarol alongside Adrian Devereaux at Hot as Walter Racing for 2014. She's running up in seventh place. Uh, Melanie Cleveno has been one of the fastest drivers all season long, and really, um, Cleveno has sort of been the has sort of really been. Um, uh, the big cheerleader, I think, behind Lynx Racing because she is, uh, because after Lynx Racing sort of hit a slump, uh, Melanie Cleveno just was, uh, her sort of endless positive attitude sort of kept them going. Uh, and here's Greg Woodard running in sixth place in the 41, uh, Phoenix Performance like Koya. Woodard's uh, 41 car, he's, uh, Woodard's been having a, a decent season, a lot stronger than it looks on paper, even though he did win at Wales under some interesting circumstances, but uh, he deserves a pat on the back for his efforts so far this year. Tonight is no exception. Here's two guys I don't think we expect to be seeing this far f uh, at the front of the field. Chris Davenport in the six car. Whoa, Davenport had a, me had a massive crash in first practice, but um, he was clear to drive, and here he is in the six car, but Peter Short in this 22 car is on fire tonight. Uh, Gino Kuznetsov is a lap down in the eight car. He's been having a, oh, gets hooked a little bit by Ashby, almost turns it around. Kuznetsov up into the high line, and uh, Kuznetsov sliding up a bit, but he's going to make up, he's got a strong run around the outside here, and he's not letting that go to waste. He's going to try to get himself back in the lead lap, it looks like, and Kuznetsov makes a run around Davenport on the outside. And Davenport uh, is on the lead lap, and Kuznetsov is not. Well, anyways, we got a battle for the lead here between Peter Short and Yamino Tenchi. Uh, Tenchi in the uh, in the clockwork midnight, car 25, Peter Short in car 22. Uh, we're not quite sure about what Peter Short is doing next year. We hope he's back in the series, um, but that may not be the case. There's been quite a few people interested in that particular car he's driving, especially given the way it's running tonight. Tenchi sliding the back of that car all over the place as Peter Short makes a, makes a run to the inside. Tenchi at the line has the spot. But Peter Short is not giving up in the Black Diamond Racing 22. Tenchi trying to hang on. Peter Short sideways. But he saves and hangs on to it. Peter Short's got the lead right now. But Tenchi's got a huge run coming around the outside here. Because Nyatsov proved he can make it stick on the high side in 3 and 4. Tenchi does it as well. Yamino Tenchi hangs on to the lead in the 25 clockwork midnight. As Melanie Klebno now is working around Greg Woodard. And that's Zelda Ashby in one of the two FPO cars. Car 55. Ashby has not had a win yet this year, neither has Melanie Klebno, and I'm surprised that's the case with both of these two drivers. Adrian Devereaux and, and uh, Carlos Roqueta are coming towards the front of the field ever so slowly. They're running 12th and 13th. Roqueta, in particular, his first start for Cats of sort of a last-minute call-up, but uh, the Colombian really... Uh, uh, I gotta tip my hat off to him because he's been doing a very, very good job when, uh, really, he's been catching quite a bit of flack for only being in this car for money because Aratel... Some people are saying that it might be because Aratel is trying to expand into South America, and uh, Aratel might have nominated Roqueta for this car, uh, even though Roqueta is not actually sponsored by Aratel in the TM Mexico series where he runs normally. He's actually missing a TM Mexico race to be here. Here is car number 30, Ash Bridges, as he's being lapped. Um, Ash Bridges uh, made it made it into the 110% uh, rule quite easily. Uh, but really, oh boy, he's been he's been a bit of a, a bit of a mobile chicane in practice. But uh, 
He's doing a better job in the race than he is in practice, so I'll give him that much. If Scott Stoidler in the 28 is not faring much better than his teammate, um, I'm pretty sure the back of the most of the field is going to get tired of seeing Manicor cars, but here comes Peter Short trying to take advantage of Scott Stoidler. As Short makes a move on the inside, here comes Melanie, but look at the 25, able to hold on around the outside. That 25 car with Yamino Tenchi at the wheel, doing a great job just defending and holding off some cars that may actually be faster than that car. Here comes Klimno around the outside, though, in the 12 car. He doesn't quite pull it off, but now Melanie's going to try to set up the, the 22 again. Looks like the 12 of Melanie Klimno's can get something going on the outside. Peter Short not making Melanie's life easy. Greg Woodard goes to the bottom. Klimno trying to get around Peter Short on the outside. Not quite happening. Yes, yeah, she's going to do it, actually. Melanie gets around. Peter Short coming through the quad oval. I didn't think I'd ever see a quad oval. Oh, uh, done correctly, but Melanie Cleve, no big wiggle there. But she catches it, and now she's going after the leader. Here comes the Lynx L313 of Melanie Cleve, no, who just rocketed off a two into three. And now she's going to have a run at Tenshi in the, the 25 car down into the quad oval. This is the only quad oval in the world, I think, that's actually put on some decent racing, uh, to be quite honest with you. Um... And as Melanie Klevno makes a dive on the inside of one and two, and she's going to get it. Melanie Klevno takes over the lead of the race. And now we're looking back at Adrian Devereaux, her future teammate, as uh, Alessandro Rossini shows how to be a good backmarker. Scott Stoidler and, well, Ash Bridges, though. Ash Bridges in that 30 car. Uh, and again, now he gets the hint. Uh, trust me when I say Ash Bridges was much, much more of a, a nuisance in practice. It looks like he's learned a couple things. Uh, Bridges is uh, a regular in uh, Australian touring car racing in the uh, second tier of Australian touring car racing. Um, hasn't really done much of note. And here is Greg Woodard going after Peter Short. Peter Short's going to try to hold the outside and looks like he's going to be able to do it. Woodard looks like Woodard may have just touched the paint there. That yellow line there, not exactly providing the most grip and uh, once you hit the paint it sort of uh, doesn't exactly give you what you need to get through the corner. As Greg Woodard in the 41 now backing away from Peter Short. Maybe he's cool. Maybe he's uh, just trying to save his tires a little bit and then uh, set himself up for another run at Peter Short in a couple of laps. Here's Ebenezer Quiggles Jr.'s Ebenezer Quiggles Jr.'s new uh, ride. He's one lap down in 25th place, but uh, Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. just sort of, I think he just wants to get through this one with this race and the next race at Queensland without too many issues. Got a nice blue car on there, though. This is a livery that the team is actually planning to run um, in British Columbia, which is, of course, FPO's home race. Here's Scott Bates sitting back in fifth in the Custom Cards 88 car. Uh, Bates is uh, he's, he's a, still a dark horse for the championship, and with Taub out of the race, this is an excellent opportunity for Bates to capitalize. He won the last Speedway race at Indianapolis, so... Um, I wouldn't count the 88 car out for uh, a second uh, for a second win here tonight. And Adrian Devereaux in car number one has worked his way up to ninth. So uh, I think the Frenchman definitely was holding his cards close to his chest in practice. And uh, doesn't seem like he has uh, quite the same pace as some of the cars way up in front. But it looks like he could definitely get himself there. Uh, get himself up into, the, into podium contention. Uh, as he's trying to make a run around Kuznetsov, doesn't go. Oh, here comes Chris Davenport with a big run on the inside. Devereaux's plan spoiled there because Davenport just had a, just had a huge run. And uh, Adrian Devereaux playing it safe there. Knows that Chris Davenport is A, known, uh, known for crashing into people, and B, uh, can just follow him right through. As Melanie Cleveland encounters some back markers now. Melanie's had a, oh, we have... Uh, Tenshi was ready to make a move, and so was Woodard. Melanie Klevno's biggest... Oh, Ash Bridges not paying attention. Benoit Vogler is... Melanie Klevno's big weakness, I've noticed, seems to be in with uh, lapped cars. Uh, Melanie's always been a bit too tentative, it seems, around lapped cars. Uh, probably rightfully so, because some of these guys, you can tell there's a reason why they're being lapped so many times, because their handling is gone on those cars. Whatever handling was probably left in some of them. As uh, Scott Bates and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. are working together here. Quiggles Jr. not racing Bates for position, but uh, I think Bates doesn't really mind that, having an extra wingman right behind him, because the 99 has not really made any effort to pass him. He's just riding behind him at the moment. As Melanie Klebno in car number 12 is going to kick off green flag pit stops, uh, uh, among the leaders anyway. Some of the lap cars, as you see, have already come into the pits. Uh, great run for Klebno. Here's Kuznetsov in car number 8. And Scott Stoiler in car 20. Oh, contact! And Stoiler off and into the wall. And Scott Stoiler goes out of the race. 
That's I can. That's definitely going to be out of the race. There's a lot of damage to the left front of that car, and I have a feeling because Nyatsov really needed that yellow. And we got problems with the 41. Oh, Woodard's out of it. At this time, uh, he doesn't leave with a wrecked race car. But, uh, he's sort of been involved in too many of uh, messes created by other people, but Woodard uh, sadly goes out of the race for a mechanical failure, and that's rare to see on those like Hoyas. But as you see, Tenshi is retaking the lead during that round of uh, pit stops. A couple of cars got burned by those uh, by that cycle of pit stops, but it looks like everyone sort of cycled through. Kuznetsov in the 8 car, by the way, was uh, uh, that he was really the big beneficiary of that, and uh, and kind of surprised you. I mean, we're not seeing anything more looked into that. But anyways, Tenshi's former teammate Zelda Ashby's hanging back there in second in car 55 in the FPO car. Now, wouldn't that be something if uh, Ashby won tonight? <clears throat> but Yamino Tenshi in car 25 trying to hold off uh, the charge from Ashby as uh, we've got uh, Kuznetsov in the eight car. He's slowing. Oh, he's oh, there's smoke coming out of the back of that car. And, uh, well, um, if Kuznetsov brought that last caution out on purpose, uh, it doesn't seem like it matters, because he's, uh, now out of the race, because that is definitely going to be, uh, that's definitely terminal. Uh, and every time you see that much smoke coming out the back of a car, that's an engine detonation there. Here's Adrian Dever uh, doing battle with Chris Davenport, Davenport for position, as, uh, you see right behind him, the 15 car is Independence Trophy contender and former, uh, Master Cup Drivers Champion Matt Taylor. And Arto Kakinen in the 9 car, who is still running. So, uh, Devereaux now trying to have a run on the inside of Davenport. Coming into 1. Adrian Devereaux slides it in. Chris Davenport gives him plenty of space. But the only time I've seen Davenport do that all weekend. And uh, Devereaux's getting... No, they don't quite get by because they got Ian Cooper to do battle with. And if there's anyone who's a little bit difficult to pass, it's that car. Um, anyways, here is Leonard Roderick in the 4 car now beginning to make his name, uh, his presence known at the front. Ashby tries squeezing him down, but Roderick's coming through anyway. Rep move from Roderick said, you can come, keep coming down, you're just going to wind up in the wall and not me. Roger Kendall in car number 94 is, uh, running the 29th on his debut with Gessler Richter. Uh, he also is a regular in Australian touring car racing, but he's at the top tier of Australian touring car racing. He has a couple of 7th place finishes this season, but that's really about it as far as his Australian touring car results go. Ragin' Roger Kendall has not exactly been having the best of debut weekends. He's got Michael Sykes right behind him in the red 5 in car number 16. Or, <laughs> running in 16th place in car number 5. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, as you see, um, the launch red alert car, Michael Sykes, uh, in this 5 car, trying to make up for lost ground. Um, Sykes is still a he's still a championship contender. We're not quite sure what his management are doing uh, next season. We know they're going to be involved in the series to some um, uh, in some extent. Here is Gaspar D'Souza and a huge group of cars doing battle for position, but they're all stuck behind the lap car of Troy Adams, and this is getting to be a bit interesting here. You got Kingston Johans up there. Lewis Kingston's having a strong run, and so is Chris Johans. Here's Gaspar D'Souza in that double zero car. We're pretty sure he's going to be staying with Black Diamond Racing. And Black Diamond Racing might get some pretty big manufacturer backing. And it could come with this man, Chris Johans, car number 29. The driver of car 29 may be headed over to Black Diamond, especially if um, the whole uh, um, American Launch Energy Racing Team and Lennard partnership happens. Uh, Johans now on the high side with Lewis Kingston, and um, we could see Chris Johans moving over to Black Diamond next season with Inglesby backing, and that would really help Chris Johans because he does uh, some other things with Inglesby in what will become the uh, FARC for um, 2014. Here is Leonid Roderick doing battle with Yamino Tenshi for the lead of the race. Roderick pinching Tenshi a little bit up the track, but Tenshi doesn't really mind. That 25 car can run the outside, uh, we've seen. And uh, Roderick having a bit of difficulty getting by Oh, uh, the midnight here coming into three. This is where the 25 car is really shone. And I, oh, Tenchi squeezing him down a little bit. Roderick being very assertive side by side still with Tenchi. As uh, Roderick now, he had the lead at the line. Tenchi get, not giving him a whole lot of space. Just barely enough here. The racing line here at Calder Park isn't just narrow. This whole track is narrow. Uh, so Roderick finally gets by Yamino Tenchi in the 25 car. As Cleveno and Co. have encountered Ash Bridges for what seems like the 15th time this evening. I, uh, well, looks like that's, looks, well, at least he's holding the line. Have to at least give Ash Bridges that. As, uh, Tenchi is now uh, being caught by Zelda Ashby. Looks like Ashby's 55 car 
is uh, doing much better on long runs than short runs, because this 55 car now appears to be the quickest car on the racetrack. Uh, so, um, Tenchi and Ashby used to be teammates, and on multiple occasions, uh, both of them would be running pretty much the same pace on any given weekend. Uh, so that was always uh, a bit of an interesting inter-team battle when they were driving for Owen DeGarmo's team. Speaking of Owen DeGarmo, he may be back in the series, but um, as an independent trophy entry, and that'd be great to see Owen DeGarmo back in some uh, capacity. Here is Chris Davenport. He's keeping up and hanging on. He's running in fifth place. This is a great run by Chris Davenport. Uh, he's actually done very well, actually, on most of the uh, larger speedways. He did very well at Fontana. Uh, he did very well at Quincy, where he came from the back of the grid and won the race. And he's also doing well here tonight. But other than that, I, Chris Davenport has had a, quite a few massive crashes this year. And uh, one too many incidents. As Melanie Cleveno has been stuck behind the 777 of Ian Cooper for, what, for uh, quite a few laps. But unlike being stuck behind Ash Bridges, the 777 car is actually fast enough to keep up on his own. And now Cleveno finally gets his, is going to get a run around him. Along with Lewis Kingston in the 17, looks like Cooper's tires may have finally burned off. Um, excuse the pun there, because that is the name of the tire supplier for this series as well. Chris Johans is, continues his fantastic run. He's running up in 13th. Oh, Troy Adams at 18 cars, all sorts of sideways. Uh, Joao Paulo Vidal is on the lead lap right behind him, but uh, Hannah Percy and Troy Adams are off the lead lap. They're not racing Johans for position, but that 36 car of Vidal is... Here is Roger Kendall and Benoit Vukler. Um, Roderick and counting them, countering them in not the best place, I have to admit, coming into one. Especially because the racing line really narrows out there. Roderick, Tenchi, and Ashby going to try to go right on by. Kendall being, uh, oh, Vukler, I don't think saw them coming. And the 48 car, I don't think, uh, I think Roderick may have shaken his fist over at Vukler for that. But Adrian Devereaux, look in the background. Here comes the killer shark, car number one of Adrian Devereaux. Is really uh, real the real the Look how much ground he gained just by these uh, just by these two back markers, just sort of getting in the way, uh, unintentionally, obviously. But uh, even still, lap cars have been a big deciding factor in many races this year. Adrian Devereaux now has got a run on Ashby. Here he comes on the inside. Car number one, the defending two-time series champion. He's going for three in a row in this series. Nobody has ever done that. No one has ever won the Master Cup three years in a row. Adrian Devereaux wants to be the first to do that. He's already the first uh, driver uh, from outside the United States to win the championship and the only driver to be born outside the U.S. to win the championship. Here is Yamino Tenchi in the 25, losing a bit of ground to Roderick as that car, that, no, that Volpe seems to be very strong on exit off four there coming into the quad oval. Either that, or this, either that or the Clockwork Midnight just is uh, not so, not very strong on the inside on the exit of four, which I think might be, uh, I think both might be true, <clears throat> especially since early in this race this 25 car was absolutely flying on the outside off of four, seemed unstoppable. But, but it looks like Tenchi uh, doesn't really want to run the outside that much because um, I think she's worried she'll lose uh, another spot because there are some cars that are faster on the inside than she is on the outside. That's the kind of dilemmas you might find here in oval racing. Here is Arto Kekkonen running up in 18th. He's recovered from his problems he had early in the race <clears throat> as he runs here behind Zelda Ashby in car 55. But uh, Ashby's a lap ahead of Kekkonen, and uh, well, Arto's probably not going to get uh, up into the top 10 unless we have a huge attrition rate in the second half of this one. And here is Joao Paulo Vidal in car number 36. He's having a very strong run in this uh, Ian Masterson car. This is his second Independence Trophy run. Jacob Card nearly put this thing in the field for the round of Colorado, uh, but for a late race incident there. Vidal, however, uh, we didn't expect him to be here. There was a couple other drivers we were, that were uh, being considered for this car, but Vidal ended up getting the nod anyway, and uh, he's having a very strong run. As you can see here is Adrian Devereaux going for second. Here he comes, Adrian Devereaux on the inside of Yamino Tenchi. Tenchi trying to hang out of the outside, but Adrian Devereaux on this one car has just been so, so strong tonight. It just keeps getting faster and faster as this race goes on. Whatever adjustments they've been making to this number one car have really been paying off. As you see there, Devereaux just blows by Tenchi, and that might, I think, justify Tenchi's... Um, Idea of trying to hang on to the inside lane a little bit there instead of riding the outside. As, oh, Ash Bridges is into the wall in the 30 car all by himself, seemingly. Um, <clears throat> oh, okay then. He was a lap behind, a couple laps behind Rossini, so uh, well, that was interesting. 
uh, Leonard Roderick. And the four car continues to lead. Here is the 30 car of Bridges. Um, letting Adrian Devereaux by. Oh, giving Devereaux a bit of a scare there. Um, as you see, oh, we got Tenshi coming into the pits on lap 95. Tenshi trying to pit when nobody else, not many other cars, are in the pit lane. Melanie Clevno has the same idea. Pit lane traffic has been also a big, uh, big factor this season, especially when it comes to some of these green flag stops. Carlos Roqueta pits from 7th, Christian Hans from 8th. Great run by Roqueta, by the way. He's, uh, he, if it had not been for Yamino Tenshi, he easily would have been stealing the show. Uh, because this, uh, because we, it's hard to expect Roqueta to do very well when so little is known about him. Uh, by the main uh, by the main game here. Leonard Roderick in on lap 96, and you can see how much traffic there is in the pits here. Adrian Devereaux in as well. In the one car, Zelda Ashby is in, but as you see coming out of the pits, Adrian Devereaux is going to take the spot from Roderick. A Adrian Devereaux now. Now, where is Tenchi in the 25 car? Devereaux on the merging lane. He's coming... Up on the racetrack, Michael Sykes. There's, there she is. There's Yamino Tenchi. Tenchi goes right on by, and Yamino Tenchi resumes the lead of the race. And that's how much pit lane traffic, even on, even on the exit road, can cost you. Uh, but now here is more lap traffic that Yamino Tenchi probably didn't want to see. Davenport moved up a spot in the, uh, uh, in the number six car, the, uh, the alert car. Davenport's really been having the edge over Michael Sykes, but. Uh, that earlier race gamble, uh, where uh, Davenport pretty much threw the dough. Here's Ash Bridges again, and we've seen. Here comes Adrian Devereaux. Look at a look at how big of a run that Devereaux's got in that blue car. And now Bridges up on the high side. Bridges into the wall, and Devereaux into the back of him. Here is car on board, car number one, Adrian Devereaux. There goes Bridges up the racetrack into the gray. We're in, right up in a no man's land. Davenport or uh, Devereaux nowhere to go but right into the back of Ash Bridges. And uh, Ash Bridges really out of his depth today. Nearly took Adrian Dever out of second. And uh, oh boy, the Australian not exactly shining here in his home, in front of his home crowd. Lewis Kingston and Carlos Roqueta doing battle for seventh right now. Kingston having a run on the Colombian. As Kingston makes a run on the inside down the main straightaway, doesn't quite have him there. And we're going back to a much more interesting battle between Chris Johans, Joao Paulo Vidal, and Peter Short. All three of these cars are sort of outsiders for uh, points, really, let, let's be honest. But you see Hannah Percy in the 08 car just sort of hanging around here. Uh, Percy in the 08 car, not exactly racing these guys, and not exactly a factor in this battle either. As here is Yamino Tenchi in car 25, trying to hang off, hold off Adrian Devereaux despite front end damage on the one car. Oh, Tenchi trying to squeeze him down there a little bit. Devereaux not providing as much room. But Adrian Devereaux is going to go right on by Tenchi. Tenchi tries to power back on the outside in this 25 car. Not quite. Adrian Devereaux has got the lead. Tenchi going to try again. Uh, no, not close enough. Not close enough. Adrian Devereaux has got the lead for now. Here's Matt Taylor, the uh, former Master Cup driver's champion in car number 15. Oh, contact with the back of the 30 car of Ash Bridges. And Taylor into the wall with just a few laps remaining in this one. Come on. Oh, Roderick's into the back of Taylor. Former teammates colliding. Taylor let that car glide back down the racetrack. And, oh, no, he did it again. Well, that was um, rather silly. I think Taylor should have just held the brake and stayed up towards the outside. But he let go of the brake, drifted down the racetrack, and took Roderick out of the race. Uh, Roderick had um, no good things to say about Matt Taylor. And it's, uh, well, Taylor comes on, comes on Ash Bridges so fast that Bridges can't get out of the way in time. And you see he's drifting down the racetrack. There's Roderick. Nowhere to go but right into him at that point. And uh, Matt Taylor and Ash Bridges aren't making too many friends out there. But, uh, well, granted, um, I have a feeling that some there's a couple cars that really should be black flagged for not really making 110% of what the leaders are doing. Here is Yamino Tenchi in car 25. Guys, he's got some uh, ground to make up on Adrian Devereaux. He doesn't quite have a whole lot of time to do it. Oh, whoa, whoa, Ian Cooper. Triple seven car just came flying up out of nowhere. Um, and just, and Vidal's in trouble. Vidal's out of it. I see uh, there's a lot of damage to the right front of that car. So Joao Paulo Vidal is out of it, and Ian Cooper's out of it. With Now we've got one more restart with 11 laps to go. Big disappointment for both of those guys, but we've got 11 to go, and Devereaux rockets off the line in car number one. Tenchi, not such a good restart. We've got, uh, we don't have too many cars left on the lead lap. 
and uh, not a lot of time to settle these positions. Tenshi trying to hang on in car 25. Ashby in the 55 trying to have a run. Kendall going way up high to try to let everyone by, but nobody is there. Roger Kendall, that 94 car. It's easy to get that car confused with Arto Kekkonen's car. But now you see on the inside there's Zach Duff. Lewis Kingston is back there in the 17 car, but looking, looking fifth. Raketa, Carlos Raketa is going for fourth. He's going for it. Scott Bates is going with him. But look also in the background. There's Gaspar D'Souza and Melanie Clevno. But Raketa hanging on there on the inside. He's going to go. He's trying to follow Daniel Melrose around the 17. Oh, Kingston pulls down in front of the 67 car. And Kingston having a run on Ashby. But here's Melanie on the move. Gotten around D'Souza in the double zero car who's stuck behind Rob Nelson. Great run for Nelson, by the way. Haven't had a whole lot of time to mention him at all tonight in the BKR Australia car. But now, Yamino Tenchi in the 25 car, trying to get around some of these back markers and trying to have a run at Adrian Devereaux, but it doesn't look like there's going to be enough time for that. Yeah, Devereaux's got a pretty big lead here. So Ashby's trying to hang, hold off Zelda Ashby in the 55 in a spirited charge. Tenchi really holding off the, the 55 now. But uh, there's a couple other cars that might have something for these two. Yep, there is Tenchi and Ashby had a look there on the inside. Didn't quite have... Uh, didn't quite have enough to really justify sticking her nose in there. Uh, that could have been a ra rather big smash at the end of this one. Uh, here is Melanie Clevno now. Scott Bates, they're working around the inside of Carlos Roqueta in the 7 car. Roqueta trying to hang on and score his, his first ever top 5 in his second start. Scott Bates trying to close the points gap. But Roqueta's hold held on to that spot as Ashby has another run on the inside of Tenchi coming into 1. Doesn't quite, oh no, she's going to have a run there. Tenshi swings to the outside. And now the 25 car, is she going to be able to hang on? It looks like she is. But no, here comes Ashby in the 55 on the inside. Not not too many more chances and Tenshi shuts the door. But there's Hannah Percy in the 08 car. Percy, could Percy be a factor in the battle for second? I don't think so. Adrian Devereaux, on the other hand, has had to come from the back of the field up to the front on several on a couple of different occasions in this race. He's got he's got a couple back markers in the way, but he's just he doesn't really have to do anything. He just has to let off and cruise to his third win of the season. Adrian Devereaux wins at the Calder Park Thunderdome in a strong drive by the reigning champion. As Tenchi held on to second, Nashby held on to third. Carlos Roqueta replaced Julian Asova sort of at the eleventh hour, uh, missed the TM Mexico race to make it, comes home fourth. Big pat on the back for the Colombian, who took quite a bit of flack uh, for replacing Elena Sova, basically because of um, sponsorship. But uh, that being said, I think there might be more to this kid than just money. Melanie Clevno uh, rounds up the top five. Strong runs by Scott Bates, Lewis Kingston, Gaspar D'Souza, Peter Short, and Chris Johans. Big pat on the back as well to Chris Davenport, who didn't, who managed not to hit anything in the race, and Kevin Dwyer, who uh, kind of flew under the radar for most of the weekend. Michael Sykes and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. both had uh, solid runs, but I think Sykes is looking for a lot more than just 13th. Um, the body language over there kind of said enough. Arto Kakinen recovered to a 15th place. A strong run by the Finn. Daniel Melrose takes home the final point for 20th. Let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship. Despite scoring no points, as I mentioned before, Taub still has the lead and a fairly comfortable one. He will leave Australia with the championship lead, no matter what happens to him at Queensland. However, I don't think Taub is going to want uh, to put his uh, championship lead in too much jeopardy. Adrian Devereaux and Michael Sykes and Zelda Ashby even are all realistic ch uh, title threats. The two Lynx cars are... Um, also could be considered threats, but both of them have quite a bit of work to do, as does Scott Bates and Luciano Savaral. Savaral wants to end his tenure at Hot as Walter on a strong note. Leonid Roderick as well. Behind Roderick, I'm tempted to say that everyone else is out of championship contention, although I would like to point out there is a fairly big gap between Gaspar D'Souza, who is 11th in points, and Lewis Kingston in 12th. Nersova not driving for Katza for the rest of the season, so she's going to stay on 248 points unless she gets a late-season a, a late season drive, and I don't really see that happening. Peter Short uh, and Kurt Pliskin there. Yamino Tenshi is still in the top 20 despite missing half the season, um, the, despite pretty much being a promoter's option-only entry with the Midnight uh, and uh, the Omeka that they had earlier in the year. Zach Duff has had a, has had a very solid season, I, I think, in the Mitchell and Sun 74. Kuznetsov... Uh, that's going to be a pretty interesting how Rookie of the Year is going to turn out between uh, Kuznetsov, Quiggles Jr., and uh, Chris Davenport. I have a feeling Kuznetsov might have the edge in that battle. 
Without further ado, let's have a look at the Independence Trophy standings entering Queensland. The only two major gains of note are Craig Yonser and Chris Allen. And uh, beyond that, Matt Taylor gained a few points in the 15 car. But uh, other than that, not too many major noteworthy uh, moves in the Independence Trophy. The BKR Australia cars, notably, uh, were way down in the Independent Trophy standings outside the top 20, but uh, this is only their second race. They're going to be at the next two races, the Round of Queensland and the Round of Brazil. The Round of Queensland, which is the next race on the calendar, will take place at the Fraser Coast Motor Park, a very slow and winding course that presents a unique challenge for the drivers.